Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God he serves. the second chapter, first verse through the fifth verse. Amen. We'll give you a little time to find it. Amen. That's the book of Mark. The second chapter. Amen. The first through the fifth verse. Amen. And this, amen, particular passage of scripture, amen, a couple of years ago blessed my life. Amen. And I thank God, amen, for the word of God. Amen, that goes forth to encourage us. Amen, to hold fast to the faith. Amen, to hold fast. Amen, to the word and the will of God. Amen. Everybody has it? Amen. Mark 2 and 1. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come not unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Thank you for the reading and the hearing of God's word. Amen. Today's lesson, amen. I want to take for a topic, amen, whatever it takes. Amen. I found out in living this life, amen, whatever it takes in the realms of holiness, whatever it takes, amen, for you to make it into heaven, whatever it takes for you to live this godly life, you have to do whatever it takes. Amen. All of us are not on the same level. All of us are not going through the same things. But sometimes you got to take your salvation and you got to do whatever it takes to keep it. Amen. You got to do whatever in the realms of the word of God to do, the, to live this life. Amen. The first verse said, and again, he entered in Capernaum 
after Sundays, and it was noise that he, Jesus, was in the house. Amen. It's nothing like Jesus being in the house. Amen. Sometimes when I'm at home, amen, I can be at home with my kids. I can be at home with my husband. Oh, man, but when I get on my knees and start praying and begin to worship Jesus, amen, it's nothing when the Holy Ghost comes in the house, amen, and anoints you, amen, in your house, amen. It's a blessing when Jesus is in the house. Amen. Jesus had quietly. Amen. Jesus, was, he was humble and meek. He wasn't one that, amen, wanted everybody to know what he was doing. Amen. But he entered quietly and made his way back into the town, amen, called Capernaum. Amen. But somebody saw him. Amen. They saw him return. And, amen, it began, everybody began to talk about it. Amen. Jesus had made it back. Amen. They begin to, the word begin to, amen, go abroad. Amen. And everybody begin to hear about it. Amen. And you know, some of us are familiar how fast tra uh, news travel. Amen. Social media, amen, want to portray all of the bad news. Very seldom do I hear some good things. Amen. But anything that, that's about Jesus is good news. Amen. Sometimes it seems that bad news even travels faster than good news. Amen. Amen. But many knew of his healing powers. And there would be some, and some that just came just to see what was going on. Amen. But the noise, amen, it got so, amen, the word got out that Jesus was here. Amen. And I don't know about you, amen, but I like to hear about good news. I love to hear good news. Amen. I love to hear positive things. Amen. You know, living this life, we have to live this life. Amen. Wanted to hear about the good. As saints of God, we should be able to sit down with each other and tell each other and encourage each other about the wonderful news that God has done. The good things that God has done. Amen. The marvelous things that God has done in your life. Amen. Knowing that Jesus had just arrived. Amen. is good news. Knowing that Jesus is a savior on today is good news. Knowing that he's a deliverer on tonight it's good news. Put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> Mark 2 and 2 says, and straightway. Straightway means all at once. Many gathered together. Amen. And they began to get together as in it so much. There was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. Their, that house was so packed. No doubt they were all in there like this. But sometimes it's whatever it takes. Amen. To get your deliverance. To get your healing. Amen. But they were all bunched in this little house. Amen. It was so packed that even no one else could get in. Amen. And he began to preach the word unto them. Amen. In just a very short time. Amen. It didn't take all night for them people to go uh, flood that house out. It was all at once. Amen. And that house was full. There were so many people. Amen. And Jesus' message. Jesus' message. It wasn't just ordinary. It wasn't the normal everyday message that we hear on the television. It wasn't the ordinary message we hear now on the radio broadcast. Amen. But his message was full of power and authority. Amen. And I love those type of messages. I don't know about you. Amen. But you can, I can sit down and I can feast off a powerful word of God. Amen. And we know that Jesus' message, amen, there was no formality. He didn't have to be up on a high podium. He didn't have to have thousands and thousands. Amen. He wanted, to, he wanted the people to be free. Amen. And you can tell that he, he didn't have no formality because guess what? He was in a house. He wasn't in a big sanctuary or a synagogue, but he was in a house. Amen. The scribes, amen, was, was, went strictly by formality and worship in the synagogue but not Jesus. They were hungry for this type of preaching, amen, which was for all people. This message isn't just for those that are down and out. These are not for just those that are saved and sanctified, but this is for all people, amen. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, have a high degree, amen, amen. God's word is for all people, amen, and I thank God, amen, for our leaders on tonight, Amen. They feed us the pure, adulterated word of God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. They preach it without fear and trembling. Amen. And that's what I don't know about you, but that's what I need. I need the 
wonderful are the pure adulterated word of God because I'm going to make it in heaven. Amen. If it costs me my life, I'm going to make it in. Amen. In this day and time, we need that strong, that strong word of God, that strong meat. Amen. So that we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Matthew 4 and 4 says, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. It didn't say a few words. It didn't say pick and choose which word. It said by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. I don't know about you, amen, but I'm doing whatever it takes. Amen. I'm doing whatever it takes, amen, to make it into heaven. Amen. And this third verse says, and they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Amen. This man was sick of the palsy. Amen. And no doubt, amen, he wanted healing in his body. Amen. And he, he had four. To me, they were some great friends. They were some great friends. Amen. And palsy, amen, I began to look it up, and it's a progressive disease. Amen. And it, uh, it is, uh, palsy is a paralysis of the body part, often accompanied by loss of sensation and by uncontrolled body movements such as shaking. It seems this man, this man's palsy had gotten to the extreme case. Amen. Because he couldn't even get up and go himself. He was unable to walk. And palsy has a terrible shaking associated with it, and it's actually like a short circuit in the brain. For the most part, people with palsy are able to walk. So this had to be someone that had the advanced disease. It had spread really rapidly that he could not even walk. Amen. Because it took four men, four good, faithful friends, amen, to take him up. And someone look at your neighbor and say, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. If it takes me being down and out or me being discouraged, I hope I got some friends or some encamped about me that'll pray. I hope I got some good people around me that will cover me, amen, while, while I'm going through. Amen. If you have a friend that is in dire need of deliverance, bring them to the house of the Lord. If yourself need healing, come on in the house of the Lord. Don't stay at home. Sometimes it's hard. Amen. But come to the house of the Lord where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Amen. There are times I come into the house of the Lord and my, and my body is aching. But guess what? I'm still going to give a God a praise because no rocks are going to cry out in my name. I'm going to give him a praise. Amen. You won't tell. Amen. That. Amen. But I'm hurting. But I'm going to give him a praise. Amen. Because I found out that when I press my way and I make it to the house of the Lord, I feel better after a little while. Have you ever came to the house of the Lord and maybe had a headache? Amen. And before you left, amen, and you got up and praised God, you were healed. Sometimes you didn't even got to come to the altar. God will heal you and meet you where you are. Give God a hand clap. Amen. And if you're not concerned, amen, about your loved ones or about your friends making it into the heaven, make, or if your friends is not concerned about you making it into heaven, Amen. You may need another set of friends. Amen. If they're not concerned about your overall salvation, sometimes we need to check ourselves. Sometimes we need to check our surroundings to make sure that we're connected. Because sometimes we can be connected to the wrong people. Amen. In my prayers, Lord, anybody that's connected to me that shouldn't be, remove them out of my life. Amen. Because I'm going somewhere in God. Amen. God has somewhere for me. God has some work for you, but you can't go if you're connected to the wrong source. Give him a hand clap on tonight. If you have friends that, amen, influence you to do the opposite of the word of God, that's not a true friend. Amen. You got to connect yourself to the right people. It says that when they could not, could not come nigh and for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. Those were some sure enough friends. Somebody say sure enough. Because guess what? They did whatever it took. They didn't just sit by idle and let their friend go to rock waste. Amen. They took great measure, amen, to uncover the roof. It says, and when they broke it up, they broke it up. It's not even their house. They didn't even pay the rent. They weren't even just the landlord. Amen. They broke up somebody else's roof. Could you imagine coming home and somebody tore up your roof? No. Amen. 
bed, broke it up. They let down the bed wherein the sick of the posse lay. Amen. We can only imagine how loud, large this crowd was. Amen. But there was no way to get to Jesus through this crowd. Amen. We saw great faith. That's what you call some great faith. I got some bold faith that I'm going to come to your house and remove the roof. Amen. That's some extraordinary faith. Amen. But when, you, when you're doing whatever it takes, you got to do some extraordinary things. Amen. You can't be ordinary. Amen. You got to do some extraordinary things. Amen. First of all, they had a great love for their friend to, to go through this much trouble to get to Jesus. Amen. You must also be careful what type of friends you associate with. Everybody's not your friend. His friends did not tell him, boy, you crazy. You better go have a seat. They didn't say, uh-uh, this is impossible. How are we going to do that? Because sometimes people will get afraid. You want me to go do that? No way. Amen. But living for God, sometimes you have to get in the press and do the unthinkable. Somebody say unthinkable. Do the unthinkable, amen, and watch God bless. Amen. And while I was researching, I found out these homes were only one story, and they had a flat roof. Most of the roofs you see today have the arch at the top. And it was accessible by a staircase on the outside of the home. Because of the tight quarters, the roofs were used for work as well as sleep. So that lets me know that they sometimes they slept on top of the roof. Don't try that today. Amen. They were thatched, the roofs were thatched with rush, which was matted layer of dead material, uh, plant material, and it was held together by mud. Amen. And wood beams or branches made the structural part of the roof. Amen. So they had that much faith that if we can just get this man to Jesus, amen, if we can just get him to Jesus, everything is going to be all right. Amen. I, I, amen. When I got saved, amen, my situation ran me to Jesus. The things that I was going through ran me to Jesus by any means necessary, whatever it takes, amen, to get to Jesus. You need to do that. Amen. Whatever measurement that it takes, for you to do it, you need to do it. When Jesus saw their faith, it didn't say when my daughter saw my faith. Amen. And living this life, it's all about Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, thou, thou son, thou sins, be forgiven thee. Amen. First of all, Jesus recognized the faith. That was the first thing he recognized. Amen. And faith impresses Jesus. Amen. Elder Alfred says, now faith. I was quoting that scripture on my way here. Now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. It is. So you, we have to learn how to exercise faith. Amen. Believe in God that what his word said, he will do it. Amen. And here this lesson lets us know that they exercise some great faith. Amen. And sometimes when going through, it doesn't look like we're going to come out like we want to come out. Amen. But you got to have faith and believe God. Believe his word that he said. He's not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. But if he said it, he'll do it. Amen. Look at somebody said, if he said it, he'll do it. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yes. Glory to God. At any rate, amen, we see here that this particular case, this disease may have been because of sin in the man's life. We don't know for sure. Amen, but we know that God is a deliverer. Amen, he said, thy sins have been forgiven thee. Doing whatever it takes means that we have to do like Hebrews 12 and 1, uh, and Hebrews says, lay aside every weight. And it doesn't just say the weight, but it says, and the sin." Which does so easily beset you without, amen, that, that to be beset easily, amen, without effort. Amen. So you got to be cautious. Amen. Sometimes, amen, when, uh, you'll be going through and you may feel weighted down or you may feel overwhelmed. Amen. But you got to believe God. Amen. And we got to run this race with patience. Amen. We can't be in a hurry. Amen. We, got, we can't be in a hurry to live this life. Amen. I've learned to take one day at a time. One day at a time. Amen. And we have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Some of us don't want to go through. Some of us want the trial to come today and here tonight. Amen. But we, this is, sometimes this is a suffering way. Amen. Because God has to 
make us. He got to rough us up a little bit, amen, so that we're able to endure some things. Amen. Everything is not going to be easy. Amen. So we got to go through some things. Amen. Weight means heaviness, a burden, pressure, or a load. Amen. But we got to lay it aside. Amen. To put it away. Amen. Separate yourself. Amen. And we all know what sin is. Amen. Because if you delivered, you was delivered from it. Amen. You wasn't delivered in it, but you were delivered from it. Give God a hand clap. <laughs> amen. And we know that sin is, amen, acting or behaving, a behavior against God's law. Amen. Have you ever seen or heard, amen, or uh, seen athletes or runners, amen, prepare themselves, amen, for a marathon? Amen. They exercise several days, several hours a day. Amen. They go to practice daily. They drink plenty of water. Amen. Have anyone ever seen athletes that run? Amen. Have you ever watched, amen, athletes that run? Amen. And most of the time when they're running, they're kind of light. They have on light clothing. Amen. They're not running with those ankle weights on. Amen. You know why? Because they're trying to win the race. Amen. They don't have all this extra. Have you ever seen an athlete running in a coat? Blue jeans? Jordans? Have you ever seen that? No, because they, they have a goal in mind. Amen. When they run, they have on light clothing so it won't hinder the progress. Amen. When the time comes from the race, they are dressed alike. Amen. Maybe just a little different colors. But they're easy to identify by just looking at their clothing. In the same way spiritually. First Peter 2 and 9 say, but we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, royal, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Amen. In order to run this spiritual race effectively and productively, we have to let go of dead weight. Somebody say dead weight. Somebody on tonight is carrying dead weight. But you got to let go. I shut it up. You got to let go of the dead weight on tonight. Amen. We have to dress like saints of God and we have to look holy and be holy. Speak holy. Amen. And even walk holy. Amen. Because God is looking at our life. Other people are looking at our life. Amen. A couple of months ago, I was out and shopping. Amen. And as I was shopping, amen, I had some articles that I wanted to go try on. And the lady that was there said, well, just place your clothes here. And she looked at me and she said, what church do you go to? And I said, I go to full gospel. And she said, oh, okay. And so, you know, I went on, because I'm thinking, because she looked like me. She was dressed like me. And so I just went on, and I was thinking to myself, well, maybe she, she go to attend our church. And I don't know everybody here, because it's the Lord's church. And I haven't seen everybody here. So I went on, and as I went in, and I came back on, and I was in there, I was thinking, well, how does she know? How does she, why did she ask me that? And so when I came out, I asked her, I said, well, you go to full gospel too? And she said, no. I said, well, she said, because I know you. And I said, well, how do you know me? She said, because I watch YouTube. And I said, my God. She said, don't you sing in the choir? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, and I said, well, you know, do you attend church? And she said, yes, ma'am. She told me where she attend. And I said, well, she said, I look at y'all faithful, faithfully. And that God touched my heart. And I invited her. I said, when you're not in church at your church, come on and visit us. She said, I will do. But you know, we got to be walking examples. You never know who, are, who is looking at your life. And I was thinking to myself, I said, well, Lord, for her to know me, she has to watch pretty often. She has to watch pretty often to know that I sing in the choir. She's not one that just watch every now and then, but she has to know. And, you know, I thank God because she knew something because I was dressed right. It's so important. It's so important to live this life. It's so important to dress according to the will of God's word. Amen. You know, it's not always the big sins that get some people caught up, but it's the little foxes that destroy the vine. Amen. And so many times we overlook those little foxes. Amen. If it's not, you, you, you can't always fit into a crowd. Amen. You got to, amen, lay aside every weight 
Sometimes we can't be trendy and fashionable. Amen. We have to lay that aside. Amen. And say, Lord, it's your will. Lord, it's your way. Amen. I always pray, Lord, hide me behind the cross. Amen. That someone may see you. Amen. In this day and time, amen, we have to do whatever it takes, amen, spiritually, in order for us to make it into heaven. Someone give him a hand clap. Amen. Doing whatever it takes, amen, sometimes causes, it to, causes us to have to walk alone. Amen. It's not always a happy feeling. Amen. But always remember that you are never alone. Jesus is always with you, even until the end of the world. Amen. And as saints of God, we cannot even do everything and go everywhere. God had to teach me that. Amen. I'm a loner anyway. Amen. But, amen. And I've never tried to fit in. Amen. But sometimes I used to get lonely. And I used to think, well, is there something wrong with me? I see everybody else getting invitations, going somewhere, doing something. And I used to really think that there was something wrong with me. But God had to show me. He had to teach me. You don't have to go everywhere. You don't have to fit in. You don't have to be with everybody. Amen. Because God tells me, I need you to spend time with me. Amen. I need, to, I need you to know me for yourself. Amen. I need, it to, be, I need to be closer to God. Amen. And some may even say, you know, she thinks she's all of that or he thinks he's all of that. Amen. You got to let them know, no, it's not me. Evidently, you think you're all of that. I, you think I'm all of that. Amen. But I'm whatever God have me to be. Amen. I'm a child of God just like you are. Amen. But you got to do whatever it takes. Amen. For that closer walk with God. Amen. Some may even say you're antisociable. Amen. But you got to do whatever it takes for you. Amen. Hush of the home. You got to separate yourself. Amen. You got to separate yourself. You can't run with every and anybody. Amen. When you're willing to do a work for God. Amen. God, let me know it's okay to fellowship. Amen. It's okay to do things. Amen. But you got to spend quality time with God. Amen. And even when spending, when doing fellowship with others, you still got to have a godly conversation. Amen. You got to do the things of God. Talk about the things of God. Encourage your brother and sister in the Lord. Amen. Strengthen them in the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Some trials that we go through. Amen. Some sicknesses that we go through. Amen. Will only birth. Amen. Some, some things are only birth through fasting and through prayer. Matthew 6 and 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, Pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall we reward thee openly. Amen. We got to learn how to pray. Amen. We got to learn when we're going through things, we got to learn how to give it to God. We got to learn how to give it to God and not our friends. We got to learn how to give it to God and not put it on Facebook. We got to learn how to give it to God and not put it on social media. Amen. We got to develop a relationship with God. Hallelujah. So he can, amen, come in and meet our needs. Amen. We got to give it to God. Amen. And we got to pray. Sometimes you might not feel like it, but you got to pray. Amen. We got to learn how to fast and turn over the plate. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to do things that we don't feel like doing. We got to learn how to do the extraordinary things concerning God. Somebody put your hands together. Hush. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 6 and 36, 6 and 38 say, give, and it shall be given unto, given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured unto you again. Amen. God, amen. Give unto God. Give of your time. Give of your praying. Give of your fasting. Amen. Give God your prayer life. Amen. And God will come in and meet your need. God will take care of you. God will be there for you. Amen. But you always, there's always a condition to God blessing. You got to do this. And God said, and I'll do that. If you do this, then I'll do that. So you have to learn how to be obedient to the will of God. Amen. And in the natural. Amen. And God will come in and heal you. Ask me how I know, because he's healed me. God will come in and deliver you. Guess how I know? I shut it all. He delivered me. God is a way maker. Ask me how I know. He's made ways for me.
me. Oh, God is a provider because he's provided for me. Oh, God, hallelujah. He's a company keeper. Hush, da, 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 da. He's a company keeper. I know that to be true on today. Glory to God. When you're feeling all alone, he'll come in and he'll talk to you. He'll come in and he'll love on you. He'll come in and let you know him. I'm there with you always, even to the end of the earth. Amen. But you got to do whatever it takes. Amen. And all of us are different. Amen. I may have to pray two times a day. You may only have to pray one time a day. I may have to fast three times a day. I mean, three times a week. You may have to, uh, you may be okay with two times a week. And hopefully you're doing two because that's what our, our guidelines are. <laughs> but sometimes when you're doing the extraordinary, sometimes you got to throw in an extra fast day. Amen. Sometimes you got to throw in an extra prayer. Sometimes you got to pray a little longer. Amen. Instead of reading one verse, you may need to read the whole chapter. Amen. Sometimes we got, we got to do whatever it takes. I don't know what it takes for you, but God knows. You know what it takes for you. Amen. I often say that some people can watch murder movies, scary movies, killing movies, shooting movies, high, high uh, action-packed movies. I can't. I can't watch Action Pack because I'm sitting over there on nervous wreck, think I'm gonna have a heart attack. I can't watch murder movies because I don't wanna wake up in my, and have nightmares. Amen. But we, you know, whatever it takes. These things, I can't go to sleep watching them uh, at night and these things running through my mind. I got to stay in the realm of God so that when God get ready to use me, that I'm a willing vessel. I can't listen to any type of music because I got to stay consecrated unto God. Amen. Because you never know when somebody's going to ask you to pray for them. Amen. There have been times when I've been at work in my office and somebody come crying and said, can you pray for me? My son is on drugs. Can you pray for me? I can't stop and, say, and start singing or uh, trying to muster up a prayer. You got to be ready at any call, at any time. Amen. So I have to live in the realm that God can use me. Amen. And you know what that realm is. You know what it is. You can't do what everybody else does. Just because they're okay with those type of things? Yeah, I can't. I can't watch movies with cursing in it. You know why? Because it bothers my spirit and then it hurts my ears. Amen. So I can't sit content listening to it. Amen. So even when the children come over and want to turn on the TV, after I heard two curse words, the TV goes off. You have to watch that in your home because I can't be tainted. <laughs> I can't be tainted. Glory to God, and we got to live according, amen. You say, look at your neighbor and say, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. In living this life, you have to do whatever it takes. Amen, and in the natural, amen. Anybody here is a high performer on your job? High performer, you, you go above and beyond. Amen, you exceed the job duties or the requirements. Amen, you're not the ordinary or the average level three. You're that person that if I'm going to go to work, I'm going to make the best effort. I'm going to get there before time, maybe 30 minutes or 15 minutes early. When it's time for me to do my job, I'm going to go above and beyond. Because at the end of the year, I want to increase. Amen. Have you, are you that person, amen, that, amen, the, the boss doesn't even have to ask you to do anything? You see the need and you just go ahead and do it and say, oh, that's already taken care of. Are you that type of person? Amen. And God began to deal with me some time ago. Amen. That, you know, because I'm a high performer. I like to be challenged. Amen. So therefore, God told me just like you're a high performer at work, you need to have, be a high performer when it comes to the things of me. You need to do that. You need to go above and beyond the call of duty concerning the things of God. Amen. That means that when it's prayer time, guess what? I need to be there. Amen. If I arrive to work 10 minutes early, when it's time for church, I need to be here 10 minutes early. Amen. God, he knows how to discipline you. Amen. But you got to want to be disciplined. Amen. We have to do the extra. Amen. We want to go in God. We want to do in God, but we don't want to do anything extra. And God began to deal with me. Amen. Just like you are a high performer on your job, you go above and beyond. 
How about you get in this word of God and you go above and beyond? How about you start studying the word of God and go above and beyond? How about you start praying and fasting and going above and beyond? Amen. We have to do whatever it takes. Amen. As saints of God, we should use these measures when it comes to the things of God. Amen. Get the service a little early, or even if you make it on time, find yourself praying and giving God the praise. Amen. On fast days, fast as we should. I don't know about you, but I love to fast. Amen. It's not for glory. Amen. But it conditions me. It makes me. I shut a little hope. It molds me. Amen. It keeps me in the place where God would have me to be. Amen. It, 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 it does something for you. Amen. Sometimes you got to do whatever it takes. If it means setting aside some quality time to live for God. If it means you coming to the altar. If you want to be healed, you got to read some healing scriptures. You got to study the word of God. You got to come to the house of the Lord to hear the word of God so you can be encouraged. Hey, man, when I come, I want to come and I want to sit there and I want to feast off the word of God. Because when I'm going through trials, you're not going to be there to help me get through them. Amen. I love to talk to my neighbor, but I just want to say that and turn back around. Amen. Because sometimes you'll get caught up and you'll miss an important part. Somebody is laughing. You're saying, what did I miss? Amen. So whatever it takes. So you're not, not, you're not trying to be funny. And if they say you are, just say, oh, well, because you know what it takes for you to make it into heaven. Amen. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. Take the limits off of God. Do exactly what these men did in the book of Mark. Amen. They, did the, they added the extra to the ordinary. They went above and beyond the call of duty. Amen. To get the, me, the need met. Amen. And that's what we got to do on today. We can't afford not to get in the will of God. We cannot afford to miss heaven. We cannot afford to miss God. Amen. So we have to learn how to do whatever it takes. Amen. Take it personal. Take it personal. Don't try to dish it out on somebody else. Whatever it takes. Maybe your friends are not living the life. Get you some seek God for some new friends. And just do what you do until he give you some more. Amen. He'll be your friend. He'll walk closer than a brother. Amen. So we got to trust and live by every word of God. Amen. So there may be someone on here tonight. Amen. Maybe you thought you were doing whatever it takes. Amen. Somebody may have been walking the dotted line. If a strong wind came, you were over the line. Amen. Whatever it takes. Amen. Somebody may need, amen, a, 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 a refresher. Amen. Somebody may need a closer walk with God. Amen. Whatever it takes. God came in and healed this man. They went above, took the roof off, took off the shingles. Amen. Tore it apart. But they weren't concerned. Sometimes we got to have that dog, that, that dog type of dog faith that will hold on and don't let go. Do whatever it takes. Amen. Everybody's standing on tonight. We have to learn how to do whatever it takes concerning the things of God. And you have to always remember, no matter what, no matter what it look like, no matter what it sound like, God is faithful. God is just. Amen. And he'll do whatever you need him to do. If you need to be saved on tonight, he's a saver. Savior. He'll come in and save you. He'll sanctify you. He'll clean you up. He'll clean you up so good that some people have never thought that you was in sin. Amen. You, if you, whatever you need from God on tonight, meet me at the altar. Amen. God will give you strength on tonight. Maybe somebody is weak on tonight. Maybe you thought you couldn't make it. Maybe you felt like you needed to give up. Amen. But God, he'll come in. He's a rescuer. He'll come in and rescue. When you're down to your lowest, God will come in and meet you at your need. Amen. When you think all hope is gone, God will come in and he'll pick you up. God will come in. He'll save your soul. Is there anybody here on tonight? You may want God to take you higher in him. 
Amen. You may want God, Lord. Put it all on, to, on the altar. Maybe someone is sick on tonight. And you say, I've done all I can do. I can't do anymore. Give it to God on tonight. Let him come in and, and deliver you. Let him come in and save you on tonight. Will there be one on tonight? Give it all to God. Give it all to God. Lay it all at the altar. Let him know, God, it's for you I live and I move and I have my being. Don't be afraid. God, he'll meet you here. He'll come in and he'll save you. Somebody may say, well, I've tried that before and, and I just can't stay saved. He's a keep on tonight. If you want to be kept, he'll keep you on tonight. But you have to have the will to want to be kept on tonight. Amen. If you want anything from God on tonight, meet me at the altar. If there's anybody that want to be saved, if there's anybody that want to be delivered and set free on tonight, meet me at the altar. Thank you, Lord Jesus.